caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, if you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Megan Benson. And she is a motivational trainer, speaker, author, and life coach. Megan is the founder and CEO of a company called Life Bacon. And since everything is better with bacon, it's all about making life better. Her mission is to help people find their sizzle so they can live passionate and purposeful lives. All right. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thank you, Sheila. It's really great to be here. Yes. And I, I like to start the show off with relating it to my new best selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. This year, we've had just about every situation imaginable hit us. And so I'd love to hear maybe if you have a personal story uh, from your life or maybe your business where you had a tough situation and how you overcame that and got back on track. Absolutely. Yeah, it happened not long ago. Um, I, I mean, and it was kind of building for a long time because I've had this sort of never ending quest to try to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. Right. And uh, just found myself, you know, in jobs that were paying the bills um, that I ended up liking. Uh, my last job, I was with 14 years. Uh, so it was a career for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, you know, what I was passionate about. It wasn't, it wasn't um, filling my soul. And I didn't believe that it was necessarily what I was meant to do on this earth, but I didn't know what that was. And so I was kind of suffering from what I like to call life atrophy, <laughs> where it's this feeling that your life is just passing you by and you're kind of on the sidelines and maybe stuck and not fully participating, not fully engaged. Um, and time just keeps going by. Mm -hmm. And so earlier this year in May, I found myself uh, in a situation where I had started a side business and my company, you know, they were cool with that. They were aware that that was happening. And so I was trying to build this on the side and there came a point it was about the middle of May when I realized that I could not do both and mm -hmm. I had to choose. And so that for me was, I mean, I guess if you had to pick a rock bottom, I mean, that for me was probably the toughest decision that I've ever had to make because it was taking a chance on myself yeah. and walking away from I mean, it was a great job. I had a six figure income. I had a company car. I had tenure. I had lots of benefits and perks. And uh, I was literally stepping off a cliff <laughs> into yes. nothingness. Wow. That is scary. It was very scary. And especially, um, I think 
part of this too, and, and a lot of your guests, you know, that you've had on this show have gone through some very traumatic things and have just incredible stories where they have hit rock bottom. And I have had this sort of feeling of guilt for many years because I've never really had anything horrible happen to me. I've never had, you know, um, suffered abuse or addiction or, you know, a lot of things that a lot of people have to deal with. And with that sort of came this guilt of, well, here I've had nothing horrible happen to me and still what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like a double, you know, just not a good place to be. But, you know, I mean, at the same time to see so many people around me and like so many guests on your show just rise up from so much difficulty. It was like, okay, well, if they can do it, why can't I? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. So that, that is, it's something that happens. I think that as women, especially we're trained to compare a lot and there's a guilt thing. Oh, well, I didn't have the bad things happen. So I got to feel guilty or, you know, instead of I'm so grateful, <laughs> I'm so grateful. I got to read about that or listen to it and not have to walk down that, that road uh, because of whatever. I mean, right now you're in, you're in the situation we're all in with COVID and that's something that it's how you're showing up. You didn't even mention COVID as a situation and you're in <laughs> with the rest of us. So I think it could have a lot to do with how you're showing up. Like you're not seeing things that other people, oh my gosh, you know what I mean? So that, that you're here and you're yeah. here not. It's funny. It's funny that you say that because it was literally in the middle of COVID that I walked away from my job. Like it wasn't even, <laughs> It was a little bit of a factor in my mind, of course, because it it was the end of May and, you know, it was obviously the future was a little uncertain with what was happening. I don't right. think anybody expected it to drag on this long, including me. But, you know, I, I, I am a believer that timing is perfect. Timing is everything and everything happens for a reason. But I still need to step up and make the best of you know, whatever, whatever situation I'm creating for myself. I mean, I'm still, I'm still the sole person responsible for where my life goes next. Yeah. So, And if you're listening in, sometimes this, this season, especially this universal pause, COVID, all that's going on this year has caused a lot of people to have work shifts work life shifts maybe they're working from home and they still have a job or their hours got cut and now they're able to look at really living and doing their passion and purpose in life versus a job and you can you can show up and be your best and and really give your talents at a business but if it's something else is calling you and it's bigger than that and it's more aligned with your purpose and vision and mission in life, then you're going to, you're going to get rerouted one way or the other, or you're going to come to the point like Megan, like you came to this point where you're like, okay, it's time to go do this. And I need to get rid of the security blanket. Yes. <laughs> and it was something I was hanging on to for a long time. And it wasn't even just the security blanket and that feeling of having this safe umbrella to do you know, business, but it was also not having the belief in myself mm -hmm. and having very limited thinking and very, um, you know, just a mindset that was holding me back. And I, I've had so many awakenings this year. I mean, it's, it's been crazy. Um, but a lot of support from a lot of people, a lot of great books, a lot of great training, a lot of great mentors that have, you know, and it's it's been years in the in the making. I mean, this has been a struggle I've had for years. And so to finally reach this point where it's like, I finally believe enough and I feel confident enough to 
take that leap. And so now that's what I do. And now I help other people. So my company is Life Bacon. And since bacon makes everything better, it's all about making life better and helping people wake up to, you know, whatever that is for them, whatever that spark and, and to hold them accountable, and keep them moving forward. Yes. And I think that's something that a lot of times we give up parts of our passion and purpose in life to do our responsibilities, whether that's we have kids or we're taking care of our parents or something that we, you know, we got to pay our own bills. And, and so we have to go do that job or that thing to help other people or our children, whatever it is, provide. And we grow up and we have to stop doing other things like playing and having fun and, you know, maybe you liked horseback riding or swimming or dancing or, and you were on a softball team or whatever it was. And all of a sudden you get to this certain age, 18, and it's like, bzz, it's over. You can't go play anymore. Now you've got to be serious and you've got to do these adult things. And who wants to do that? Because the <laughs> other pieces of us, that's the part of us that's that's the most beautiful part. That's our meditation and motion sometimes. That's where we're connecting with the freedom of being a child and, and just enjoying simple things. Sometimes happiness is really the simplest thing, whatever that is. For me, it was swimming. I was on a junior Olympics team. I was swimming all the time as a kid. And it was a mental release for me to go swim. It was like my yoga. I was in the deepest meditation. I could swim laps. To this <laughs> day, if I get upset, I'll do three or four hours of laps. And they'll be like, whoa, I didn't know she could swim. <laughs> and she could just, and if I'm upset, I'll just swim. <laughs> and I'll feel, when I get out of that pool, I'm like, oh, I feel like it's all gone. I left all my problems behind and I was free. And so that's something that life sizzle um, that you're helping people find again is, is so important to not be so serious. Oh my gosh. I love that you are saying all of this because that is, that is such a huge part of what I teach and what Life Bacon is all about is adding in, you know, the fun. In fact, I have been dubbed PhD doctor of fun, which is P-H-U-N. <laughs> so it is, it's all about infusing that, you know, there is no reason when you hit 18 that you have to stop acting like a kid. And in fact, that is one of the first things I recommend that people do is start doing the things that they did as a child. Mm -hmm. And it's those activities like your swimming and, you know, the things that are going to tap into that kid inside that's going to take you back to that time when you believed anything was possible, right? And it's that little superhero inside of you. And it's going to wake up parts of your brain that you didn't even know existed. And you're going to be, uh, just look at things differently, whether it's, you know, a different avenue uh, to promote your business or a different idea on how to run your business. There's so much creativity that comes out of play mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and laughter. If you have children, or elders that you're caring for right now. A lot of people, I mean, I have two of my youngest are home with me uh, because the school's closed down, the dorms are closed. And so they're home and it's hard when you're that young and you've got to be home so many hours. And luckily yeah. little part-time things so they have to wear masks and this and that, but they get to go out and do something and they're very careful. But it is difficult. And that was something that I was like, we got to play every day. We got to find fun stuff. We got to do stupid, crazy things. <laughs> yes. We found this place called Sky Jump. And it's, oh. this, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's like, I don't know, 5,000, 10,000 square feet of these trampolines. <laughs> yes. Like you want, okay, I know I'm going to go take you somewhere different. And so I, I was like, you're going to have me jump for hours, but I wanted to get them. Now these are kids that are really not kids anymore. They're young adults. So they're in their twenties. We go back and we're jumping and to music and they have us doing games and all this different. It's like this whole couple hour field trip on, on the trampolines. 
And we, we all turned into little kids again. We were laughing so hard. We were crying. It was, it was the best. Was I love excellent. that. We had a blast. That reminds me. I mean, when I was a kid, my parents took us to this little, it was like a trampoline park. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't even know those still existed. That is awesome. I got to find one. Oh, yes. And they're so, it's so fun. And they got music and, you know, it's different now with the social distancing. You've got to have your mask and everything. But some of them are still open depending on where you live or just it's something silly and crazy that is outside of your comfort zone. And I think that's it teaches us like you stepped out of a career to really go into your purpose and passion. It's the same thing. Stepping out of our comfort zone in other ways helps us to be able to take those steps that are really important in our career, our business, um, our personal lives. When we're, we're, it's like we're using a muscle. Yeah. Yeah, it takes it takes you have to you have to work it and it takes practice. And it might feel strange at first or it might be hard for some people to you know, be silly or to just find time to laugh. And you I mean, if it's not part of your daily schedule, I recommend scheduling it in and actually mm -hmm. setting alarms to take time to laugh or play. I mean, you should be having serious like gut painful moments of laughter at least three times a day, you know, yeah. where you're laughing so hard that your stomach hurts and you're crying. I mean, um, we, it's so important. There's so many health benefits with laughter mm -hmm. as well, but yeah, if you, if it's hard for you to take time to do that, you have to schedule it in. <laughs> and here's the thing. Okay. So if you're running a business, and you're in leadership in that business, the most important thing, especially this year when people have so much going on at home, so many other things are happening. If you can add a little bit of fun, you know, if you don't, if you don't have a public place and you're able to, you're working, you know, preparing something or doing something where you can have music, put the music on or have a, a motivational uh, time. Like we have a power hour at work. I have a big team that I work with and we, we do real estate and this and that, and that's my other life. And, and so we have a power hour and then I do an online course with that. And so it's, we have fun and yes. show up. They work and they're more productive. There have been studies. Yeah. That show yeah. that. Yes. That productivity level goes yeah. up as much as 500%. I have seen studies on this when people are more engaged and having fun with their work. And so, I mean, I, I also do corporate training as well and ha have all kinds of fun games and activities that businesses can incorporate. You know, it doesn't have to take long, take an hour, take 30 minutes out of the day, get everyone together. I mean, everyone is so burnt out on Zoom calls and meeting after meeting and just like, you know, so much <laughs> mundane activity. And so just you got to add some fun and it really <laughs> will re-energize the whole team. And I mean, politically speaking, and I'm not getting political, everyone, but politically speaking, years ago, I they asked me what your political party is. And, and I was very young. And I said, well, I'm I'm with the free spirit party. <laughs> like, I didn't know what the parties were called yeah. I knew about politics. But I was invited in. A friend was running for uh, assembly and I helped with their campaign. I, I didn't know. You know, it was really kind of nonpartisan. It was for a friend. And I got involved with helping with their vote and this and that. Do you know, they wanted me to run everything. And I got many jobs in the political realm because I was just getting people to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to get out the vote and have fun. And because we had so much fun and we'd make games and all this crazy stuff, that everybody would show up and they're like, oh, you could be the president. You could run for office. I was like, oh, I'd run for my life. <laughs> <laughs> the leadership it was the leadership and just having fun i mean there were people there that were older people they were in their 80s i had one guy he looked 60 and he was actually 90 i remember very well that that i met him at a starbucks and we were all gathering to go back to the headquarters to get this vote out for my friend that was running for assembly and and he says oh it's my 90th birthday today and i said i'm gonna card you and it really was. And what kept him young 
was he was still active in the community, volunteering, having fun. He played golf every morning. That was his thing. He always had to play golf. And then he would be involved in everything related to the community, uh, politics or with the schools, even though his kids were all grown, obviously, at this point. And he was just involved and living and everything was fun. And you would, if you met him, you'd say he's 60, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, he like looked really good. <laughs> that is so encouraging. And that's, I love that story because it's proof. It's proof positive that it works. And mm -hmm. there are so many other stories like that, that, you know, how just being engaged and being a participant in life. I mean, it's like I mentioned earlier that life atrophy, when you're just on the sidelines and just watching life pass you by and not engaged and not living to your potential, uh, man, it just, it's such an awakening when you finally come to this. I, I gotta tell you this little story because this was when I knew that I'd made the right choice because I've never in my life been a morning person. And in fact, my husband knows, do not look at me, do not talk to me, like do not engage. <laughs> I need a couple hours to wake up and get my day going. And after I quit my job and started doing Life Bacon full time, mm -hmm. Sheila, I can't even tell you, I wake up at like 4.30 or five in the morning, which is probably a little too early, <laughs> but I, bounce out of bed. I'm cheery. I'm excited. I'm chatty. And my husband is like, what the heck just happened here? But it's crazy. And that like, to be my entire life thinking I was not a morning person, right? And telling mm -hmm. myself this, it wasn't that I wasn't a morning person. I just wasn't on the right path. I wasn't living my purpose. I wasn't being true to me. I wasn't fulfilled, you know, mm -hmm. and that's so important. That's such an important piece to having a happy life. <laughs> yes, it really does make a difference. And I mean, I quit coffee a couple months ago and, you know, the doctor said it's probably something I had to give up. And I was like, you know, I've given up gluten. I've given up all these other, a list longer. <laughs> And I was like, and now I've got to give up coffee. How am I ever going to like stay awake and do these 14 and 16 hour days that I do? <laughs> and, like, how am I going to function? And I love like it too, so I'm like playing while I'm working. So I'm having a blast. So I'm like, I, you know, this is like me having fun. And, <laughs> and so, do you know, I, I had a couple headaches. I was tired one or two days a little bit and I had more energy than ever. And it was, I believe it. I didn't need the coffee. It was something I was taught that you have to do. Yeah. You know, like I've never, uh, my husband and I, neither of us drink coffee, which is kind of strange that neither of us do. But yeah, we, Good. I've always said music is my coffee because yeah. if I'm ever feeling like tired or like I just can't get off the couch, you just put on a song and I'm up and dancing. And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you've got some, some passion and excitement inside, you don't, you don't need, you don't need stimulants like that. Exactly. And, you know, it's really interesting because with all my hours that I work, then the, the the pandemic hit. And so I didn't have my cleaning help anymore. And I was like, well, if I'm working 16 hours a day, I want to delegate those things <laughs> to somebody else. And and then I got delegated those things again. And I was like, wait, this is so not not cool. And I was at first I was not happy about it. I was like, you know, oh, my gosh. And now we got to clean things like to a medical grade clean because of this, you know, when it first came out and they're like, okay, we don't know. It could be on a box. It could be on a bag. It could come in from the store. I'm That's like, right. oh my gosh, I've never cleaned so much in my whole entire life. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm two hours to put the groceries away because I had to clean everything. Oh my gosh, that's right. I'm clean, you know, and wipe everything down. And oh my gosh. And then I turned on not the TV, but I have the TV that has the music videos. And so yeah. I see the music videos and all of a sudden the time goes by fast. I'm singing, I'm dancing, I'm, I'm not even thinking about it anymore. And I'm having my little bit of exercise in the middle of the day or at night, whatever. And it really helps. So just music changes your state, yeah. your mental state. 
And, and so I really enjoy that now. I'm, I, although I would be happy <laughs> to have help again. It's, it's kind of, <laughs> I'm used to it now. And I'm like, wow, I'm saving so much money and I, I can, you know, donate that to something more important because I kind of got used to it. If that makes any sense, it's been so long that, that we've been on this pandemic thing. Uh, so yeah. No, yeah. that's a great example because I know we've all had to make different adjustments, but it's funny how, <laughs> you know, what you thought you could never do and then suddenly you're doing it. And I mean, that's kind of how my story goes too. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so now I'd love to hear more about how, what, what you do with your life bacon program and how that works um, so that people listening in, maybe they want to join or get more involved with what you're doing. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, there's so many different ways to get involved. I'm I'm all over social media. I put out a lot of free content, just little inspirational videos. You know how to help boost your confidence, how to overcome burnout, um, how to survive when you're if you're alone going through COVID, or how to survive in close quarters with your loved one. Um, so it's just all different kinds of uh, you know. It's all about how to make your life better. I have a podcast that I'm launching next week, which I'm really excited about. And it's called The Sizzle. And it's all about how to make your life better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I have all kinds of different programs. I can offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have group coaching. I have monthly membership. I do corporate training. Um, I did a challenge not long ago, a five-day challenge. It's the Find Your Sizzle five-day challenge. Um, I have a 90 day program called the BLD. Uh, it's building the life of your dreams. Um, so there, there's really so many different ways that people can get some life bacon and get some sizzle into their life. I have a free newsletter called Bacon Bits that goes out monthly. Uh, you can sign up for that. Basically, if you go to lifebacon.com, there's all kinds of information there about, you know, what different programs I offer and yeah, it's all about finding your sizzle and yes. having some fun. <laughs> I love that. That's so important. And I think community right now is our key to freedom, <clears throat> especially as we're going back to lockdowns in certain states. We need to connect, yeah. get into groups, join a challenge, um, check out the life bacon and get support because there's times where we need others, a peer group to help us get back on track and stay on track because of the ups and downs of what's going on. And as we connect with people like Megan with Life Bacon, we're able to just have more fun and stay in that place. And then that helps our family, our friends, our community, people at work, they feel that energy. You know, imagine when somebody walks into the room and their energy is low, we're all like, whoa, and everybody feels it at work. Yeah. And the same thing is true when somebody comes to work and they have positive, upbeat, high energy. That changes the energy in the room and the productivity. And, and so we need to stay around those groups so that when we go to help other people that may be in a difficult situation or maybe at a lower energy, we can bring that energy because we've had a refueling and an accountability. Yes, that I'll tell you, Sheila, that's the number one thing that people struggle with is the accountability and mm -hmm. staying committed because pe most people have dreams and most people have something that they've been wanting to do and either they've started or they keep putting it off or they're too scared and uh, they just there's something that is limiting that belief or stopping them from moving forward. And so that's what I like to provide is that the accountability and the motivation to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I have a, a process called the five steps to bacon and each letter stands for something. And it's a whole, we go through it in the five day challenge. We go through it in the, in the 90 day program, but it's all about, yeah, figuring out what you want, why you want it. Uh, what's in the way, starting to take committed action day after day, infusing that joy, and mm -hmm. then giving back. And yeah. it, it's like a full circle. I love that. All right. Well, I'll be in one of your next challenges for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, hope uh, hopefully our listeners will join in and we'll see you there. So, stay tuned. Again, what is the one website people can go to? It's lifebacon.com. 
Okay. And I actually have a free book there called The Life Bacon Playbook. Let's get serious about having fun. So that ties right into everything that we've talked about today. There's a lot of great ideas. It's a quick 20 minute read, but just some ideas on how to infuse joy into your life because it's so important. So lifebacon.com. All right. Thank you, Megan. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Thanks so much. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and action steps to help you rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and we are here today on NBC's KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. Today we were discussing... The, the beauty and fun of travel as a career, travel as something that, that you may want to do in your life. I personally traveled for seven years straight. I enjoyed learning from some of the finest people on the planet, incredible mentors such as Tony Robbins, Dr. Wayne Dyer when he was with us. I had a blast with the travels and as a parent of six children, I still had my youngest two children at home with me, and we actually did what a lot of people are doing this year, and did in, the kids did independent study and traveled with me for two years straight. And, and I'm telling you, they learned so much from the experience of traveling. And like I said, me traveling full time as they all started going to college, I just kept on traveling and then visiting all my kids in the dorms. <laughs> and so with that, there's always a time in life. And right now, I'm, I'm sure people feel like a little concerned. Maybe is the world ever going to open up again? Will we get to travel again? And yes, there are actually many opportunities to already start traveling. And if you if you feel like it's not exactly the time, it will be at some point. I really have faith in that, in our science and just in the fact that that things do come and go and we keep moving on as as a human race and and humanity we always find ways to make things available to us especially beautiful things like traveling and getting to know people from around the world connects us even more and so right now we may have to be traveling more through our computers with online listening and online courses I know I offer uh, 14 different online courses that I teach every week and so I get to travel all over the place from from my little recording studio and I really enjoy that because now I have clients and uh, students in my courses that are from other sides of the planet that maybe would have never joined had it not been from for the uh, pandemic worldwide pause and so I know that we already have open invitations for when they start traveling again that I am going to visit them in their countries and they are also going to come visit me and we're going to give each other the tours uh, from somebody who lives in the in the city and that's going to be a blast so one of the things that's really important is with travel and maybe you don't love travel but there's something about just getting away and giving yourself time taking those breaks taking the learning experiences and it's it's to me it goes back to self-care and spirituality whatever that may be for you and how to have those times even this year uh, when we may be staying home a little bit more than, than usual and not traveling as much, how can we make sure to give ourselves the vacation time and even the small trips? Sometimes I know lots of people, they live in a, a state or a country and they haven't even seen their own beautiful sites, their own botanical gardens or historic places to visit, mountains to climb in the area, what have you. So it may be that you're going to be traveling and having your own adventure as a family or even as a, a work group, as something fun to do, where maybe you go have a 
a work meeting at at one of the botanical gardens or some other place in the area that is permitted and that you can get out of the office or out of homes and into nature. So that is another idea. Right now I wanted to share a little bit from my chapter in my book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And I wanted to share a little bit from the chapter I have on self-care and spirituality. All right, everyone, take a listen. Chapter 10, Self-Care and Spirituality. Lisa's husband passed away. As a couple, they had recently agreed that they were going to sell their house and move to a retirement community. And now she had to do that alone. Between the loss of her husband and the home her son had grown up in, Lisa was hit with a double whammy of grief. As anyone who has lost someone knows, grief causes stress levels to rise exponentially. On top of that, selling a house and moving, even when it's a planned, happier move, is also stressful and can be unsettling. You lose things, objects get broken, and you have to readjust to a new place. Lisa wasn't just moving away from the house where she'd raised her son. She was also leaving the neighborhood she'd lived in for 45 years, where her friends lived and where she volunteered in the community. She felt she was losing everything in her life at once. Lisa and I started talking because she needed some support through all these decisions and upheaval. She was even overwhelmed with things she was usually quite good at, her paperwork and taxes, because of all the changes she was going through at once. As we talked, she told me how she took care of her husband, her son, and her community. But she had never taken time for herself, and now she was faced with too much time. I gave her the challenge of doing one thing for herself every day, as if she was doing it for her husband or close friend. If someone showed up on her doorstep in pain, stressed out, or going through something, Lisa would drop everything to help that person. Now, though, that person would be her. She was going to give herself as much attention, honor, and love as she gave to so many other people. And I asked her to send me pictures of her doing these things, so she would be held accountable. At first she was like, are you crazy? I promised her it would help, even though she thought it would be dumb. For me, I told her, do it for me if you're not going to do it for yourself. The first day, Lisa sent me a picture of herself getting her nails done with the text, I haven't had my nails done in months, not since before Dave got sick, It felt so good, and you were right. I kind of needed that break. Great, I replied. What are you doing tomorrow? From survival mode to self-care. When we hit rock-bottom situations in life, it tends to send us into survival mode. And when we're in that place, we're so busy making ends meet struggling with grief, loss, and pain, and dealing with whatever is going on that we don't have a choice but to eliminate some of the things we usually do. When we have to go to work, then go visit somebody in the hospital, then pick up your kids, and you still have to make dinner and maintain a certain level of cleanliness in your home, or whatever duties you have to do, taking an hour for yourself to go to the gym or meditate gets pushed aside. It's just today, you tell yourself, but then tomorrow comes and goes, and another day and another. The next thing you know, it's been a month or two, and then you really start to notice the difference. One day, you wake up and you're not who you used to be. When you aren't practicing self-care, it shows up all over. Maybe you're exhausted and not sleeping right. Maybe you're off your healthy diet. Perhaps you've pushed your meditation practice and it's showing up at work or with relationships. You start snapping at people you would never snap at. 
when you're already at rock bottom with one situation and then you realize how many of your healthy habits went in the fallout, it can be overwhelming. You've hit another rock bottom and you may be looking around and thinking, how do I get from here back to where I was? You start over. One step at a time. Starting over sounds scary, but there is good news. Your muscles have memory. Your body remembers healthy eating, and you can catch up on your sleep, but it's not going to happen in one day. It took you more than one day to reach this rock-bottom place. One day of not cleaning up doesn't bring a mess into your life. One day of extra spending doesn't necessarily lead to a negative cash flow situation, so it's going to take a few days or even weeks to get back to where you were. The fastest way to start climbing up from rock bottom is to take small steps and focus on little wins. Do one small chore that's fallen by the wayside, and then one reward to yourself, and do one small act of self-care, too. As you do one, the other becomes easier, and you climb back up from your rock bottom. Once you've taken the first step and have that first little win, you can take another. Maybe tomorrow you'll clean one part of your house or deal with one bill that got thrown into a pile. Set a goal or a timer, and once you reach that number or that time, stop and take some time to reward yourself for the progress you've made. Just for tonight, take five minutes to meditate. It doesn't have to be the whole hour that you used to do as long as you're doing something. Maybe you're starting over with your budget, so you can't go get a massage or facial or have a spa day right now. Just for today, try doing your nails at home. Or just for this afternoon, take a 10-minute walk. Anything that leaves you thinking, oh, that feels better, after you do it. You can even schedule appointments for time to spoil yourself a little, even if you just mark enough time in your calendar for simple things like lighting a candle and meditating, taking a walk or a nap, or watching a movie, something that's just for you. You'll still have to take the right actions and take care of the things you're required to care for in your life, but you can also honor an appointment with yourself as much as you show up for the other people or situations or emergencies that threw you into survival mode in the first place. Your body and your mind need that break. They need a respite in order to continue getting you from that rock-bottom place back into your life. Without it, it's like not putting fuel in your car and expecting to go on a road trip. You know that sooner or later, you're just going to run out of gas. With your brain and body fueled up and ready to go, however, you will be able to come up with new strategies for resolving whatever issues come up. You define your self-care. You have to take care of yourself before you help all the other people that you care for. Let me say that again. You have to take care of yourself first. Self-care looks different for everybody. It may include meditating, praying, or another spiritual practice, doing yoga, walking, running, lifting weights, playing sports, playing a musical instrument, seeing a movie, dancing, journaling, reading, being in nature, gardening, horseback riding, getting your hair or nails done, getting a facial or massage, painting a picture or creating art, sleeping in or taking a nap as a gift to your body, just sitting and being happy doing nothing. What do all these things have in common? They are activities that you do for you. And if you're not used to practicing self-care, how do you get started? Self-care is individual 
It's whatever fills your soul, not anybody else's. So first, think about what fuels you. You may have to go back in your memory a couple decades to find something you used to love that has fallen away in your life. When I was a kid, I was on the swim team. That was my meditation. When things were going wrong at home, I would go swim laps for hours. I still like to swim whenever I can. It doesn't feel like working out. Swimming energizes me. I just lose myself in the quiet, peaceful rhythm. It's the best medicine in the world for me. A friend I used to go to the spa with loves being in the wilderness. For her, it is heaven. Her favorite vacation of all time was a hiking trip where she carried everything in a backpack, went to the bathroom in bushes, and swam naked in the lake. She was one with nature, and that was a spiritual experience for her. That wouldn't do it for me. I liked the spa because it was elegant. We got massages every day and had a chef preparing our meals. They took care of us. Putting on a backpack, walking across the country, and sleeping in the cold woods would be torture for me. Self-care is different for everyone. Your partner's definition and your child's definition and your definition of passion and relaxation are probably all going to differ. You have to honor those differences and evaluate what that is for you. How are you going to take a break? What is your release? How do you meditate and relax and refuel? What are those things you've done throughout your life that have caused you to lose all sense of time? When you're in that flow state, so connected with whatever you're doing that nothing else matters, it gives you that break and that sense of peace. It doesn't have to take a lot of time or money. I don't want to completely oversimplify things, but self-care doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to cost a lot of money. It doesn't even need to take a lot of time. You can renew yourself and fuel your soul even on a budget. When you're at rock bottom, you probably don't have the time or money to take a big trip and fly to another country, just to sit by the pool and sip coconut drinks. You can still recreate the restful aspect of that vacation in your daily life without spending thousands of dollars and taking two weeks off work. Now, I'm not saying never to take vacations. You may want to travel the world or visit loved ones or go to your favorite places. I'm simply saying that you don't have to do these things in order to refuel. We'll talk more about lifestyle design in the next chapter. But when you design a life that makes you happy and that lifts you up, you don't have to take a vacation from it. Who wants a life you need to escape because it doesn't fuel your soul? So where can you build little breaks and mini vacations into everyday life? You can find a pool in your neighborhood and enjoy sitting by it. Go for a swim. Take a class. Take a nap. Trade an hour of babysitting with another family and use that hour for anything you want. The person who comes back from these mini vacations is not a cranky, exhausted, unhappy person. That person is fueled and relaxed. The little things that would normally bug you will now just roll off your back. You may not even notice. Everybody around you benefits from that brief respite as much as you do. When you practice self-care and take these little breaks, it's a bonus when you get to do something more elaborate. Take care of yourself inside and out. It's also important to take care of your complete self. Part of that means going to your doctor regularly for whole body checkups. I have a friend who was doing everything right, eating healthy and working out, but she kept gaining weight. Nothing was working, so she was ready to give up and go for the pie. 
Then she went to the doctor and found out that she had a thyroid issue. Other people in her family have the same condition, but she didn't think about it until the doctor brought it up. There was a simple treatment, and now she's enjoying the fruits of her healthy lifestyle. It's important to determine whether you have a condition that requires medical intervention. Maybe you're low on vitamin D, which can show up as depression, fatigue, getting sick often, or even brittle bones. Perhaps you need a prescription instead of a coping mechanism. Maybe you're not getting the right nutrients or are having a hormonal issue. If you're tired all the time, you may be drinking a lot of caffeine to make up for that. Some people even turn to Adderall or other drugs, but your doctor could diagnose a biochemical shift in your body. And that was a portion of chapter 10 in my bestseller, bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom and back into action in any situation if you are just tuning in this is nbc sheila mack show here on kcaa radio the station that leaves no listener behind i'm your host sheila mack and i have some news for you yes you i'm celebrating my third year now on the station and we'll be expanding the show to a global network as well. You may now find The Sheila Mack Show on all major podcasting channels, and if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, all the episodes are now available for viewing there as well. And I'm asking you for a quick favor. If you like the show, please help support the spread of this reboot channel on YouTube as well. My goal is to help as many people as possible through our interesting times to rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life. I also wanted to share a little bit more about how I got here, what I do now, and how designing a business career and life on your terms is more than possible at any age or stage in life. I am an enterprisingly forward-thinking consultant, show host, and best-selling author. But how did I get here? Well, I began my career as an entrepreneur and property investment strategist back when I was 23 years young, when I boldly quit my government job with NASA JPL to open my first of five large gift stores while also starting to invest in property. I got to work with some of the world's most loved companies, such as negotiations on leases with Warner Brothers and winning trips to London as the top-selling Crabtree and Evelyn provider in the U.S. for multiple years. My stores were built on heart as I gave back to the community I came from. So now, Some of you know this and some of you don't know this, but as a young girl with parents who were not well enough to care for me, I was homeless at age 10, then in foster care where it was really hard to get a job while in the system. I finally emancipated at the age of 15 to start college early. While running my stores, I worked with a government program. Back then, it was called Job Training Partnership Act, making my stores an open source training site where close to 200 at-risk youth started their careers. Yes, I began my career helping business leaders and working professionals to design a life they love where they can have success in their careers and get to the business of life. See, a funny thing happened along the way. Uh, When I first opened my gift store, it was kind of crazy because I was this young upstart. That's what a lot of the store owners called me. Uh, My first store was in Montrose, California, in this sweet little hometown uh, shopping park with other stores and restaurants nearby. And so I was the young upstart that didn't know what she was doing. At least that's what everybody said. And I didn't really care what they said. <laughs> uh, I, at that age, you know, their opinion was like, I don't really care. So that that was probably a really good thing because I stayed focused on what I needed to do. And I had negotiated uh to lease out a 5,000 square foot gift store that needed a lot of work and I, I got free rent and 
uh, for about six months and I had to start making the rent, which was 5,000 a month, which was a lot of money back then, a dollar a square foot. And so I had to learn and relearn. I, I finally did hire quite, quite soon in the game. I did hire a marketing expert, branding expert, I guess back then. And, uh, that, lady really helped me to figure things out when I first started. And when you first start a business, especially when you're young, it was like, <laughs> I had no idea what to do, but I needed to learn because my rent was going to start coming due every month. And over that time, I started having more success. I did crazy things like stayed opened until almost midnight every night, along with the restaurants who were very close to my store, while everybody else closed shop at about 5 or 6 p.m. So I was making more money from the start and I just really, my store was to help my kids and the products I sold was whatever the community wanted. I sold lots of things to people in the entertainment industry. I worked with cruise ships. I worked with many different people in the community. And later on, the store owners actually came to me and asked me if I would consult them and help them. I actually started buying my other buildings because I didn't like the idea of paying rent for years and years and years and not building equity. So I did get my real estate license uh, through that and invested and bought my other four store buildings. And uh, lots of the other store owners worked with me, paid me <laughs> to consult and help them do what I was doing. And I didn't really even know it was called consulting. I just knew how to figure it out, I guess. And so that's how I started my career. And now, you know, I raised six children, all that, and now they're grown. And so I get to come to work every day and do what I naturally do best as an entre enterprising and forward-thinking business leader. Through my show, courses, and live events, I guide entrepreneurs and working professionals like you through the profitable steps of building a business, creation to expansion, marketing from planning to implementation, wealth preservation through strategic planning and yes, real estate investing, and lifestyle design so that you can earn more while getting back to the business of living your best life. So I do invite you to tune in here. Uh, to KCAA Radio, and also I would really appreciate it if you went to my YouTube channel, Sheila Mack Show, and gave a subscribe and a listen to some of your favorite shows. And I do have some other exciting things, including a free gift to thank you. So if you go to www.sheilamack.com, that's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, sheilamack.com, there you can get a free gift to get started on your reboot this year. And now back to the show. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.